section of the first part of chapter one in CCNA one, which about uh, which is called Introduction to Networks. The first chapter here is more or less about how important networks are, and I suppose you already know that, but this is just to give you an idea that uh, we are so dependent on networks, so it's so important that they, um, they function and they work as they are supposed to do. So this is about the importance of and how we are using networks today, because we are not only using it for computers, we are using it for everything. We have now reached what we call the Internet of Things, which means that it's not only computers and mobiles and tablets, but it is all kinds of things that are connected to the Internet as well, which makes us even more dependent on a functional network. You can try to reflect on how, how you are using network in your life. So, here's a small video, which I suppose uh, you should see. It's just again, to tell you that we are so dependent on our networks. We are also, they're also trying to show you how things are going, and they are going so fast. If you try to think like 10 years back, uh, there are so huge difference from how you're using the network today and what you did 10 years ago. And if you try to think ten, uh, 10 years ahead, we cannot really imagine how we will use the network at that time. But what we can see is that we, uh, the things will continue to, to evolve and it's predicted that in 2020 there will be 50 billion things on the internet, like the internet of things, not, not your computers, but also like the light bulbs, the security cameras, your refrigerator, whatever, your TV, all these things that are now also connected to the network. So things will just keep evolving. And at the moment, uh, when you look at the way that you are working with networks, you can see that you are more or less online all the time. There are, of course, places in the world where there are no internet connection, but they are getting fewer and fewer. So, you can so what are we using it for? Well, we are using it for, like in this course, to learn, to learn about networks, but it could be to learn about everything. More and more we see that we are using networks in the way that we teach, which is, of course, important for you. But we are, of course, also uh, using it in the way that we are communicating with each other. We are communicating with texting, with social media, with different collaboration tools. Uh, with blogs, with wikis, podcasting, peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. And when you think about it, you are probably communicating uh, as much as you are doing verbally in all these kinds of things, maybe even more, that you communicate more with your friends and relatives and family by using social media, for instance, than you are doing with actually talking to them. And this is all because we have a network that will make sure and take care of all these communications. It's of course no need to say that it's important that what we are using medias or, or networks also for the way that we are working. Uh, companies all over the world will not function without a decent network. That is of course uh, evident. And I'm sure many of you also are using uh, networks when you are playing different games and stuff like that. It is actually a huge, huge part of all the networking traffic is, of course, the one that's created by online gaming. So that's also important. But let's have a look at networks. And networks can be in a lot of different sizes. We can have the very, very small networks at our home, like over here. Uh, we can have smaller offices, uh, we can have meteor to large networks like here in the school for instance, and then of course we have the worldwide networks that connect our different locations. If we have like a worldwide company like Lego for instance, they have connections all over the world and they are all connected to one network. 
When we are talking about networks, there are two different overall idea of how to communicate. It's either like here when we have a client and a server. The server will have the answers and the clients will ask. So we have an email client on our computer, it will ask the email server to, to give me the emails that are mine. We can have a web server which holds the website and the web client, the browser, will then ask uh, the, with the web server for the content and so on. So that's the client server. And then we have the peer-to-peer -peer networks where we have all the, 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 the devices that are connected to the network are both a client and a server. So they can have uh, information to share with the others and they will also ask the others for content. So here um, all of the, the devices are both a client and a server at the same time. Um, which is easy to set up, of course, and um, but it's not very secure. It's um, we don't have any centralized uh, administration of it, and if we look at, um, it's not very scalable, and uh, yeah, there are it's typically slower than to have a client server network. So this is peer to peer, but it's easy. It's easy to set up here. Yeah, when we look at a network in general, we can see that there are three categories of networking components. We have the devices, which is uh, the, the things that we connect, either the end devices over here or the intermediary devices in the middle. We have the media, which is more or less like the cables uh, that we connect. And we have the different services, software, protocols, whatever, who take care of our communication over the network. If you look at the devices, there are two different types. We have the end devices. This is the one, the devices that we operate, that we want to have access to the network. It's computers, laptop, printers, servers, whatever. Uh, telepresence endpoints, for instance, as well. And then we have the intermediary networking devices. These are what the ones that get the networks to function. We have the routers, the switches, uh, the firewalls, a layer three multi-layer switch. These are the ones that make sure that we can communicate and take care of sending information from one place to another. These devices normally do not send something by themselves. They just take something that are sent to them and send them onward. And then we have uh, the, the different types of media. We have the copper cables, which sends the signals uh, during uh, from, from yeah, electromagnetic current and voltage and sending the zeros and one by, by emulating that with current and voltage. We have the fiber optical cables which are sending the information by light, either light or no light for emulating zeros and ones or encoding zeros and ones. And we have the wireless networks that sends a thing through the air and using um, electromagnetic waves to send the information. We will see more into that later during the course. So. End devices, intermediary devices, and networking media will actually be the one that the, that's the content of our network. When we look at our network, we sometimes, or we always have some, we need to have some idea how it's built up. And then we have the physical topology. The topology will tell us how the networks and the network are interconnected to each other. The physical will tell us actually how the, the, the cables are run and um, how the devices are connected to each other, whereas we have the logical topology, which will tell us how, for instance, the addresses are set up, which ports we are using, which protocols we are using. So normally when we are documenting our networks, we need a physical topology and a logical topology to set that up and to get an overview of the network. Yeah. And that was it. That was the first part of chapter one.